I'm going to do a bit more of a comprehensive review of the Makara Cup Forever, a benchtop CNC machine some of you have seen me using in the last few months. You can probably guess that I like it because it keeps showing up in my videos. Now, just a quick refresher. CNC stands for Computer Numerical Control and can basically be applied to anything from laser cutters to 3D printers to robot arms. They are all controlled from computers using numbers to know where to go and what to do. The reality is, it's usually applied to subtractive machine tools, lathes, milling machines, etc. In a small shop, when they say CNC machine, they will almost, almost always be talking about a small milling machine or router. So when I say I'm reviewing a CNC machine today, I'm reviewing a small milling machine. When we look at a benchtop milling machine, we've got a motor, some kind of end mill to do the cutting, and an XYZ gantry. That's pretty much it. You've seen me review a small 301A CNC in the past. So what's the functional difference between that and the calf rubber? Lots of stuff. But let's go over the really key things that I think put the Carrera in another category from other CNC machines is size. And again, I'm not sponsored. I just really like the machine and let me show you why. So the most impressive feature of the Carrera is this automatic tool changer. Uh, it has different sizes of end mills the head can come over here and grab it, and sees its length over here, and then goes to work. Okay, and this is the pro. It tells where the work piece is. Here, let me show you. So this is where you can change the tools and drop the, the end mill. If we click drop, it knows its uh, position and goes to uh, number three and then drop it. And then it goes back to the home position. Now we can change to a pro. And it will go down and grab the pole. Now it's going to detect its length. All right, we can just change it like. We don't need to drop it now, it will automatically drop itself. We can go to number four, to number four. And first it will drop off the probe, probing tool, and then go to the number four end mill. See, it comes down and uh, detect the length of the emu before it goes to the workpiece and cut it. So I've got this nice, um, in Chinese we call it black peach wood. I don't know what we call it in English. But uh, I have a really pretty comb. I want to mill it with this kind of wood. Uh, let me put it in and see how it comes out.
Okay, this is my comb. And let's set the anchor to anchor one. X offset zero, Y offset zero. Path of region, yeah. So let's run it. Okay, I hope no one minds the noise of the CNC machine in the background. It's actually the quietest one I've ever used. Even on heavy rough cuts, it never goes above 70 dB at 1 meter away from the machine and 90% of the time it's around 60 to 64 dB. Now as a rule of thumb, when you buy your first milling machine, they say double whatever you pay for your machine to account for the cost of tooling. I think that number really reflects older manual bridge port style milling machines, but there is still some truth to it. Be it software or physical tooling, sometimes a dedicated computer to run whatever crazy proprietary software the thing comes with, you are still looking at a lot of extra money on top of your initial purchase price before you get full use out of a typical machine. This made me a little worried when I was offered the Carrera because I thought in order to get real use out of it, I'd have to spend a lot of extra money. Nothing could be further from the truth. It comes with everything. It's crazy. But in short, no, you won't have to buy anything except for the occasional replacement and meal. And those are standard, not proprietary and very inexpensive. Here, let me show you what it comes with. Okay, this is the fourth axis. You've seen me using it in the earlier video to make a key. I'm not sure this is the final version, but it should be pretty close. So it comes with a variety of M mill. There are clear labels on it. You have the Allen Allen wrenches and the fixture. There are there are also uh, some I'm using on the CNC milling machine right now. But basically, you get enough to get started. Alright, in this box we have some protective glasses, some accessories for PCB, little saw, and a power core. This uh, it, it has it do has a built-in dial laser in it, so this is for the uh, laser cutting, and this one just uh, protective glasses for chips flying out. The Carrera comes with instructions for different projects that will teach you how to use the machine and these are the materials for those projects. This is the epoxy tooling board. Different sizes, same material. This is the POM plastic. acrylic blade and this is just a uh, sanding tools this is the these are the aluminum plate and below that is for PCB oh one last thing you don't have to worry about proprietary and mills you can use the regular ones but let me show you how to prepare them for the machine
Okay, I uh, made, made uh, the comb in three kinds of wood and one of them is uh, nylon. I already cleaned up a bit. Let me show you how to do that. Okay, I've got this brass brush and it does a really good job getting the sawdust out of the little cracks without damaging the wood. Oops! Fortunately, I have two more. Okay, I'm not really a wood person. This is the first time I work with wood. But even so, I know that this kind of wood is too brittle to uh, make a comb, but it is really nice. So I'm just going to give it a simple wax finish uh, and keep working on it. Okay, this one and this one with the wax, it turns out a little too dark. But the one in the middle, it, it just turned out beautifully. Consider that I don't have any woodworking experiences, I'm pretty proud of it. And that just shows you how powerful the Carvera CNC machine is. Okay, just for comparison, this is the wood I started with. And this is with the wax finishes. Just for comparison, this is the one I made out of nylon. It's very strong, but not so pretty. Okay, this is the camera mount I use when I bike around. You all seen those e-bike videos. But I have to tighten this from school with my fingers. And my fingers aren't that strong, so I need a wrench. But I think the 3D printed one is going to break, so I'm going to make one out of aluminum on the Carrera. I'm just going to whip this up really quick in Tinkercad. It's fast, it's simple, and I can export as SVG, which I can easily convert to DXF for this photo. So today we are going to use this proto to make the NC file for my wrench. Go to uh, library, uh, go to the default project uh, parameter. Uh, I already select machine cover because I have the uh, settings for it. I just import it and then uh, select it. Now we are going to uh, make a new vector file. and save it um, name branch and then let's load our vector file let's select the camera mount wrench okay this is the wrench and I'm going to use three milli millimeters aluminum to make it so let me go to parts 
and change the name to 3mm part. So right now its thickness in the test portal is 10 millimeters. I have to change it. Uh, let's go to uh, material, custom, set, graphically, uh, minus 3.2 so that we can cut through the bar and the aluminum is around 3 millimeters. So if I set it to minus 3.2, it will cut through it. Now uh, it looks about right. Okay, uh, let's go to vector operation. Let's uh, select the cutter. We are going to use 3.175 single flute. And uh, we are going to change the fit rate from, because it's aluminum, uh, it should be slower, 500. Spin away should be higher, so 12,000. Okay. Um, so, uh, let's also go to C settings. Uh, let's change it to minus 3.2 because I want it to cover the aluminum. Um, profiling, let's select, uh, select all. And we can take a look at uh, the cutting path first. We can uh, load it and see estimate machine time. Okay. And then we go back. We're not going to use the pocketing and drilling, but uh, for profiling, we we'll select all. Right. These two, we're not going to use it. But for ruffling, let's go to the layer height. We custom. We have to change the uh, layer height. It means how deep every time it cuts through it. Let's switch it to 0.15. And we will also go to ramping and go. We will also se uh, select that. This one. Yeah, because. Uh, let's go back to vector operation, pop file link, support tabs. I want to leave uh, some material on each side and the inner side. So let's go to custom uh, settings. In here, we'll show you uh, the number of tabs, tab length, tab height, percentage of cutting diameter, 200%. Uh, I will use fix, it's easier to remember. 5 millimeters, okay, and the tap high percentage of material high 50%. Um, I'm going to use fixed uh, number, it's easier to remember as I say, I will just change it to 1 millimeter. That means on each side, it will leave 1 millimeter uh, thick aluminum, and then I will manually remove it. Right now, I'm placing dots on the outer line and the inner line so that uh, it will leave some material for me to cut. It won't uh, fully cut through the aluminum so that it won't move around while it's cutting. So this is what it looks like. It will, you see uh, it didn't fully cut through the aluminum. It leaves some material on each side and we're going to save it now as range three millimeter. All right, now we can import it to our car river and then build it.
Okay, now I'm going to uh, cut the cut the brim and take it off. My hands aren't very strong, but now with this, it's very handy. A lot of you have requested I demonstrate how to make a PCB. I don't make a lot of PCBs since JLC PCB is my sponsor and they're right here in Shenzhen. But I'll show you how it works. Here, I am applying the solder mask. And then I put it in a UV box for about 10 minutes to cure. Okay, and that's a really nice prototype PCB waiting for us to solder some components onto. Okay, final thoughts. I did not try to make this a very granular review. I was going to, but Michael over at Teaching Tab went into amazing detail and rather than cover the same ground, I decided to focus on usability and practicality. While I think it's an excellent purchase if it's within your budget, I would go check out his video first before deciding. Link is in the description box. What I try to show in this video is how practical a purchase this is for someone with no CNC experience. Is it going to get regular use or just gather dust in your garage? So final verdict. It does have a steeper learning curve than a 3D printer or laser cutter. But unlike any digital fabrication tool I've ever wielded, the manufacturer assumes you are starting from zero and gives you a really comprehensive basic CNC education as part of the package. All the tooling and material you need comes in the box. This saves you weeks or months of onboarding time and is a big factor in my recommending the Cup River. Honestly, it's something I'd like to see more companies do. Include something of a curriculum with their products so you can get the most out of it. The other thing that I can overemphasize is the Touch Pro and Tool Changer. Those make this a completely different tool than your typical AliExpress CNC router, even my huge style CNC. 
I love it. But finding all the workpiece edges and swapping out tools and putting in the tool lamp is hugely time consuming. It means I don't use it unless I absolutely have to. Auto tool changing and auto pro just make a huge, huge difference. For flat pieces of metal like this, I can get them done almost as easily as on the laser cutter or 3D printer. If I did them on my style, it would be at least an extra hour, although on the style cutting still is an option. Keep in mind the Carverware can handle light cuts in brass and aluminum, but still it's absolutely not going to happen. The machine is ideal for any sort of industrial design studio or classroom. The noise pits at about 70 dB at 1 meter. So far, I have not gone over that volume. That's about as loud as a vacuum cleaner, but try it out wherever you intended to install it. The link to the sound meter I use is in the description box. In the professional setting, you can easily mute the same part in a variety of different materials for a client to choose from, like I did here. And a small household vacuum is in love to deal with any mess without the need for a large noisy dust removal system. That brings us to the cons. The built-in dust removal system on mine isn't very strong. The container fills up but it really doesn't get everything. That said, mine was one of the most early wheel models and I'm told the dust removal system has already been fixed. I have to say, there isn't really anything I don't like about the machine itself. In fact, I really love it and it's become something I use at least once a week. But don't whip out that credit card yet. It's Kickstarter. And yes, we all know what that means, but I have to say it again. I've had fantastic dealings with Macara. I like them, I trust them, but I don't know them very well. I'm in the south in Shenzhen, they're in the north in Beijing. They're a new company. This is their first hardware project. I know you all hate established companies doing Kickstarters, but those are really the ones with a track record for success. One of the reasons I don't do my own Kickstarter is I would only partner with a company that have experience to make sure I could deliver. And once I do that, everybody gets angry and flames the Kickstarter like they did with the 3D Premium because it's an established company. You can't have it both ways. If it's a startup, you run a higher risk of non-delivery. If it's an established company, you're more likely to get what you ordered. But a lot of you get angry it's an established company. Macara is a startup, just like many of you prefer. I have a lot of faith in them. I feel they're honest, but there is an element of risk and that's up to you. As far as waiting until after a Kickstarter campaign, my feeling is once they deliver, for future orders, the price will be at least double with probably a three month lead time. That's from looking at products like the Bantam CNC, which costs more, does less, and has a substantial wait list. If you want to get a Carrera at an affordable price, the Kickstarter will probably be your only chance to do that because once people realize what these can do, they are going to be hard to get a hold of. That's just my two cents as a user, but check out some other reviews and get a second opinion. If you're interested, I've put the link in the description box. Please remember to turn on notifications. A lot of people miss my updates. Until next time, remember, if I can do it, anyone can do it!